What's up everyone? In today's video I'm going to be talking about smartphones and smartphone photography accessories that you can pick up for pretty cheap to help get you better pictures and videos while you're stuck at home during all of this. I will be uh, linking all of the products you see here in the comments section below, so be sure to check those out if it's something you're interested in. So I want to get started by talking about the phones that we have over here, and these are phones that um, most people have right now right? Uh, these are, in my opinion, probably the best phones available for photography and video uh, available in the U.S., that is. Uh, starting from my right, I have the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, um, the iPhone XS, and then over here on the far side, the Google Pixel. This is actually the Google Pixel 2. All of these phones are going to get you an incredible image. Like smartphones have come so far in terms of what they're capable of, especially with photos and videos, which is honestly why a lot of people choose to upgrade in the first place. My preferred device is going to be the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. There are a couple reasons I really stuck with Samsung for my uh, for my phone over the years. Uh, number one, I really like how you can customize the device to your liking. And number two, I think the camera is really fantastic. Uh, the iPhone over here, fantastic camera. I mean, the iPhone is the world's most popular camera. More photos are taken on this than anything else. And it's, it's that way for a reason. It's just, it's very good. Uh, my favorite thing about the iPhone is not actually the camera itself uh, for taking stills photos, but rather how good the quality is you get out of video footage from the iPhone. You get some really nice features on there, including the ability to shoot at 24 frames per second, which is what I'm shooting on right now. It gives you that nice cinematic look. Uh, you can also do up to 120 frames per second, 4K, all of that stuff on your iPhone. So a lot of great features in there and I encourage you to do some research and learn how to use all of them to get the most out of your device. On the far side over there, the Google Pixel, you know, the Pixels kind of came out of nowhere a few years back and I find it to be just a really enjoyable phone to use, especially for photography. The Pixels are particularly awesome at taking photos because of their use of computational photography, right? So that's software inside of the device that's taking your photo and processing it in a way that makes it just really pop and really look great. So moving on to some other accessories you can use in conjunction with your devices to help you get better photos. Sometimes we don't have available light to use like this window over here to help light this scene, right? Sometimes we have to introduce artificial lighting into a scene to light a product or to light a person or to make a room pop just a little bit more. So on the table here, I have a couple of my favorite lights. Uh, these are both pretty inexpensive, but the result you get from these is just fantastic. So the first one is the Aperture ALM9, and this guy is about a credit card sized light that has a huge output on it. I use this all the time for photos and videos, and it's just like incredibly handy. It's practically nothing. You can stick it in your pocket, take it with you anywhere. The battery lasts for a really long time, and the quality of the light is pretty good. If you want something a little brighter, this guy comes in about 50 bucks, by the way. The updated version is a little bit more expensive. I've only ever used this, and it's been enough for my needs, so I haven't got one of those yet. Um, but I did recently pick up uh, an off-brand light. This is the ESDDI, I think it's the 380. I purchased this uh, about a month ago for about $35 on Amazon. And... Thanks, P. My dog is right down here. This light is just, it is ridiculously, ridiculously bright, right? Just look how much that fills up the room. I actually use this quite a bit when I'm uh, helping, helping uh, my wife make workout videos. So we go to a gym. I can't go to the gym right now because everything's closed. But when we go to the gym, the lighting in there is, is very dim. It's not great. Using something like this can really help make 
make your subject pop just a little bit for videos. As far as photos, it's really nice because you can adjust the brightness. So say you just need a little pop, you got it. Or you can turn it all the way up and light an entire scene with this. Another cool feature of this, you can change the temperature of the light. So you can go from a cool daylight balance to a more warm, kind of like an incandescent bulb that you'd see in a lamp at home. All in all, highly, highly recommend this light for 30 bucks. I mean, you're probably not gonna find something more useful. It is a little bit bigger than the aperture but it is also quite a bit more powerful. Um, if you don't want this one, there are probably hundreds of these LED style lights that you can pick up for next to nothing. Super handy. I Honestly, I never leave home without at least one of these in my bag. The last piece of lighting equipment I wanna to talk to you about today is this guy. And a lot of you are probably wondering, well, what the heck is that like dinner plate device that he's got on the table there? So this is, what they call a five-in-one reflector. Basically what you do with this, you reflect light. On the silver side of this reflector, I mean, you can really bounce and shape the light coming in from outside. Now you can use these in conjunction with not only natural light, but one of these artificial lights as well, if you wanna fill in some shadows somewhere. So let me show you what that looks like just on my face right now. No reflector and reflecting in some of that light from the outside. And that gives me much more even lighting on my face here, not the harsh, uh, more contrasty shadow look that you're getting here. It's crazy how big of a difference this thing can make. And it's next to nothing. I mean, I think I paid like 10 bucks for this. It folds down and can fit in your back pocket. Super handy. Boom. Okay, so we talked about lighting. Uh, now let's talk about the last piece of equipment or type of equipment that I think you probably should have if you're interested in getting better photos. And that's going to be different ways to mount your camera. Um, number one, and probably the most popular tripod in my opinion, I could be wrong about that, but that is the Joby. These are called Gorilla Pods, Joby Gorilla Pods. And these are incredibly versatile because these legs bend, right? You can take these and bend them in any kind of configuration you want. And I've used this to wrap around poles, trees, I mean, you name it. You can put a camera basically anywhere with the Joby. It's super handy, a little on the pricey side. I think these guys are about 60 bucks, but as much as I've used it, it is totally worth the price of admission. Second one up here, this is just a cheap, I think this is a Pro Photo is the brand of, the, no, Pro Master. I don't even know where I got this thing. Look at that, literally sits in the palm of my hand. Super nice, set it down. Uh, these are actually really handy too if you are FaceTiming people, right? So you want to have a conversation with somebody but you don't want to sit there and hold your phone. You can pop it up on one of these and just enjoy the conversation without having to you know, hold it the entire time, especially now that we're all stuck at home, this would definitely be nice. Uh, similar tripods can be purchased at, I think, Walmart and Best Buy for just a couple bucks. Definitely a good investment. The next thing I have here, so this one definitely geared more towards folks who are interested in making videos with their smartphone. Uh, this is the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, and this is what's called a gimbal, right? So what a gimbal does is it stabilizes your phone and gives you incredibly smooth footage, right? The kind of cinematic footage that you're used to seeing in movies and on uh, good quality YouTube videos. You get a joystick on the back that allows you to control the device and what it's looking at, up, down, left, right. You can go landscape, you can go portrait. I mean, there's just so much that you can do with this thing and it is, it's just, it's just really fun to use if you got a couple bucks and uh, wanna get something really neat to play with that can potentially really up your video game on your smartphone. The last piece of equipment that I have out here on the desk that I wanted to show you are these, I don't know the technical term for these, but the clamps. These guys can be picked up at your local hardware store for a couple dollars, um, or I think I got a six pack on Amazon for like five bucks. 
But I find these things to be incredibly useful for whatever it is. Say you want to hang something up as a backdrop, use a clamp. Say you want to put your little light somewhere, get one of these. You want to add something to your tripod, get one of these. Like they're just, oh my gosh, so handy. I use them all the time. You never know. Like it's essentially like having a couple extra pairs of hands on set with you at all times to hold whatever you need to hold and they're incredible. As far as gear, that pretty much covers it, but there is one other thing I wanted to talk to you about uh, that is just essential for smartphone photography. Now, you don't have to do this, but I highly, highly recommend it, and uh, what that is is editing your photos. Smartphones these days get a pretty good image, and you, you know when you go to Instagram to post it, you can use filters. Facebook, I think, has filters. Um, there are apps out there that apply filters to your images. I personally like to actually go in and edit all my images that I post. You go from like a pretty good photo to, wow, that really pops. Like, what did he take that with? Where was this taken? What's up with the lighting? It's, that's super cool. So the app I use to edit all my photos on my phone is Adobe Lightroom. It's a free app available on Android and iOS, and it is incredibly powerful. And it's just fun to use. Uh, the other one that I get a lot of feedback on that folks have used is Snapseed, which I believe is made by Google. Um, I haven't personally used it a whole lot, but I found it to be pretty simple um, with a lot of power behind it. It's also very quick, too. It doesn't like lag and take forever and kill the battery on your phone. But give it a try. Give both of those a try. Do you know what? Download it right now. Take a photo and go play with it. The first one, again, Adobe Lightroom. The second, Snapseed by Google. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something about some stuff that you didn't know anything about. I will be linking all of the products in the comments section below. So do check those out if you're interested. And also just leave me some feedback, leave me some comments, give me a thumbs up. I'm trying to keep these things going to keep myself entertained and hopefully teach you guys something in the process as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.